Hello chaps, here's your arpeggio video. In the last two videos we covered scales. Now scales are used in music to create melodies. Now if you want to make harmonies, we use chords. So what is a chord and why are we talking about them? First of all, let's play C major again as a scale. So I played all at seven notes of C major, one after the other. Now, if I played those all at the same time to make a chord, it would sound a bit muddy and confused. So when we play a chord, we only choose the important notes from the scale. These are the first note, the third note, and the fifth note. And you can play the top note, which is just the first note again. So why am I talking about chords? Well, on a keyboard I've got the ability to play more than one note at a time. Like that. Now most instruments aren't able to do that. So if you want to play a chord, you play the notes one after the other. That is where an arpeggio comes from. The word literally means played on a harp. It is like playing a chord on a harp. So let's just find the arpeggios in a couple of different keys. We can start with F major. Here's the scale. Okay, now I'll play it as a chord. So if that's the first note, the third note, the fifth note, and the top note. Okay, and now as an arpeggio, the same notes but one after another. Now let's try one more major key. We'll do one in D major. Here's the scale. F sharp and a C sharp. Right, now the first, third, and fifth notes. It's a chord. And now as an arpeggio. Now we can write it with accidentals like this, or we can put the sharps in a key signature at the beginning. Now notice we're only actually using the F-sharp and not the C-sharp, but we're going to write them both because that is the key signature of D major. Now just like our scales, we can have arpeggios in the major or the minor keys. So let's try an A minor arpeggio, which is the relative minor of C major. Here's a scale. Now as a chord. And now as an arpeggio. And we could do one more. Let's do a D minor arpeggio. Here's your scale. And now as a chord. Finally, as an arpeggio. Now we've actually played both a D major and a D minor arpeggio, so let's just look back and see how they're different from each other. Here's the D major arpeggio. And the D minor. So what's the difference? It's just one note. That middle note of the arpeggio is 
is a semitone lower in a minor chord or arpeggio. Now we call that note the third because it's a third note of the scale. One, two, three. And it is the third which makes the difference between major and minor. And so we call these two intervals a major third and a minor third. So we can use this to find minor arpeggios from major arpeggios. For example, we start with C major. Let's play our C major arpeggio again. We've got a C, E and a G. The E is our third. C, D, E, third note of a scale. If you want to turn it into a C minor arpeggio, we're going to bring that E down a semitone to an E flat. as a chord. Here's a C major chord and here's a C minor chord. So you've now had a pretty thorough introduction to scales and arpeggios. Time now just to listen to some music that uses both. The music you can hear now was written by Johann Sebastian Bach. I chose this music firstly because it uses a lot of scales and arpeggios and secondly because it's just really really beautiful. Bach was writing music in Germany hundreds of years ago now, but his music to this day is known and loved around the world because it's just so great. There's something about Bach that manages to communicate to so many different people. I've put the sheet music on the screen so that if you want you can follow along and spot the scales and the arpeggios either with your eyes or your ears. Alternatively, just close your eyes, sit back and enjoy the music. Yeah.